Imagine waking up one morning to find nearly a billion dollars missing from your country's central bank. Not because of economic collapse or a bad investment, but because a group of unseen attackers quietly reached into the heart of the global financial system and pulled money out. That's what happened in 2016 when a sophisticated cyber attack targeted Bangladesh Bank and sent shockwaves through the banking world. This is the story of how it unfolded, why it mattered, and what it taught us about protecting money in an increasingly digital age. It started quietly, like many cyber attacks do, with access. The attackers found a way into the bank's internal systems and established persistence. They didn't mount a flashy, loud assault. Instead, they moved slowly and deliberately, learning the terrain, mapping out processes, and waiting for the right moment to act. The reason this slow strategy worked was simple. The systems they infiltrated were not prepared for the modern threat landscape. Outdated software, weak network segmentation, and a lack of robust monitoring created a window of opportunity that the intruders exploited. Once inside, the attackers focused on the bank's ability to send international payments. They targeted the mechanisms used to communicate with other central banks and clearing systems, the pathways that move large sums across borders. Rather than try to directly grab money from vaults or accounts, they crafted fraudulent instructions that looked legitimate on paper and in the machines that process transactions. The attackers understood workflow, they mimicked authorized behavior, and they timed their moves to blend into normal activity. Over a short period, they sent dozens of transfer requests that appeared to be routine. At first, most of the requests slipped past automated checks and human review. Some requests were blocked, some were routed for manual processing, and a handful cleared the necessary hurdles. The hackers were selective and adaptive. When one attempt failed, they tried a slightly different route. When a message raised a flag, they paused and recalibrated. By the time bank staff noticed something odd, many of the fraudulent transfers had already been executed, and the funds had been dispersed through multiple accounts and intermediaries in different countries. The discovery of the attack was chaotic and terrifying. Staff at the central bank noticed discrepancies between their books and messages from the international payments network. Panic spread as auditors and regulators tried to piece together what had happened. The initial assessment underestimated the scale. As investigators dug deeper, they realized the attackers had attempted to move far more money than they actually managed to steal. Confusion over timing, incomplete logs, and unfamiliar processes slowed the response, letting some of the illicit transfers complete before they could be stopped. Once the scale of the theft became public, the repercussions were immediate and wide-ranging. The incident exposed weaknesses at the institutional level, and it revealed how interconnected modern finance is. A single breach in one country can ripple through correspondent banks and payment systems worldwide. Regulators and financial institutions scrambled to investigate, share information, and shore up protections. The event prompted new discussions about real-time monitoring, transaction verification, and the need for stronger cooperation between banks, technology providers, and international authorities. But beyond the headlines and the congressional inquiries, the heist offered a set of clear lessons for organizations that handle money. First, software and systems must be kept current. Patching and updates may seem mundane, but they close doors that attackers use to get in. Second, visibility matters. If defenders can't see what's happening across their networks, if logs are missing, incomplete, or not regularly reviewed, then attackers can move in darkness. Third, principle of least privilege and proper segmentation reduce the blast radius when an intrusion occurs. Attackers should never be able to freely move from a single compromised workstation to mission-critical systems. Fourth, human processes matter as much as technology. Strong verification procedures, multi-person authorization for large transfers, and training to spot social engineering and fraudulent instructions are crucial. The fallout also highlighted problems outside of the bank itself. Correspondent banks and intermediaries played a role in the movement of funds and differences in controls across institutions created opportunities for laundering and obfuscation. The attack showed how important it is for all institutions connected to global payment networks to adhere to robust standards. Weak links anywhere can be exploited to hide illicit transfers. 
International cooperation and timely information sharing between banks and law enforcement are essential to tracing stolen funds and disrupting criminal networks. Importantly, the story isn't only about technical fixes. It's also about culture and governance. Senior leadership must prioritize cybersecurity not as a line item expense, but as a central component of operational resilience. Boards and executives need accurate, timely information about risk, and they must ensure policies are enforced consistently. Cybersecurity is not just an IT problem. It's a business problem with profound legal, reputational, and economic consequences. There is also a human side to this tale. Employees at the central bank and at correspondent institutions were thrust into a crisis situation, making difficult decisions under pressure. Mistakes were made, procedures that seemed adequate in calm times proved insufficient in a fast-moving crisis. That's a painful but useful reminder. Regular exercises that simulate attacks, clear escalation paths, and rehearsed communication plans can turn chaos into coordinated response when real incidents occur. Beyond lessons for institutions, the heist served as a wake-up call for the public and for policymakers. It fueled legislative and regulatory initiatives aimed at improving financial system security, and it accelerated investment in fraud detection technologies, anomaly detection, and automated monitoring. It also sparked debates about how to balance convenience and speed in payments with the need for security and checks that prevent abuse. For individuals and smaller organizations, the takeaways are practical and actionable. Keep systems and applications up to date. Use multi-factor authentication wherever possible. Train staff to recognize phishing and social engineering. Establish clear procedures for approving significant financial transactions and insist on independent verification for high-value transfers. Regularly review access privileges and implement network controls that limit what any single compromised account can do. On a macro level, the heist highlighted the need for resilience and redundancy. Financial systems should be designed so that a single incident cannot cascade into systemic failure. That means diverse monitoring sources, cross-checks between independent systems, and protocols for rapid information sharing across both the private and public sectors when anomalies are detected. Finally, this episode is a reminder that human ingenuity can be used for both harm and good. The same creativity and persistence that allowed attackers to find their way into bank systems can be channeled into stronger defenses. Cybersecurity professionals, investigators, regulators, and technologists learned from the incident and implemented improvements that make similar attacks harder to pull off. But the technology landscape evolves quickly, and adversaries continue to search for weaknesses. Vigilance must be ongoing. So what should you do if you care about protecting finances, whether personal, corporate, or national? Start by understanding the basics of digital hygiene, updates, backups, multi-factor authentication, and phishing awareness. Push for transparency and accountability in how institutions handle risks. Support and demand investment in security monitoring, incident response capability, and international cooperation to trace and recover stolen funds. And finally, remember that security is a continuous process, not a one-time project. The Bangladesh bank heist was a dramatic example of how cyber risks can translate into real-world losses. It showed how attackers could exploit weak points in technology, processes, and governance to extract value across borders. But it also offered a blueprint for improving resilience, better patching, stronger controls, diligent monitoring, and a culture that treats cybersecurity as central to business operations. If those lessons are taken seriously and acted upon, the shocking scenario of waking up to a vanished fortune becomes far less likely. Act now, strengthen your systems, train your teams, and make security part of every financial decision.